Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren Henry and I'm the fashion architect. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draft the princess scene. So the princess scene is pretty popular and a lot of people do it in different ways. And you know, it works. It actually works for most, but best believe that I'm going to be showing you the fashion architect's way today. Of course, to draft the princess seam, what you would need is a bodice block. So you need an already drafted bodice block like this. This is actually a commercial block. This is size 10. Sorry for the way it looks. I've used this for many different things. This block has seen better days. So yeah, it looks like what it has been through. But oh well, I'm going to use this now to... I'm going to trace this out on my paper. And if you want to learn how to or see how I make these blocks, you can check. I anything empire or an empire cuts or an empire whatever it's referring to the underbust when you hear the empire length measurement it simply means the distance from your shoulder to the underbust you know you're taking from the shoulder the highest point of the shoulder across the bust and then stopping at the underbust and a quick tip is please stop you should stop measuring before the underwire of your client's bra or of your bra so if you get to the underwire you're adding the length to it your bus stops before the underwire so please if you don't know what an underwire is it's basically that iron the metal thing in your bra so you should stop measuring before the underwire that's for the empire length and now the empire width is basically the circumference of your underboss so i'm sure many people are using these measurements already you just measure around that underboss this is a size 10 block here and a size 10 so i'm just going to use my measurements now to create this princess seam let's get into it now i'm going to show you how to create the shape of the bust for the princess seam so I told you that my I need two measurements, empire length. My empire length is, sorry, I'm gonna write it just down here. Assume is a board. <laughs> so my empire length measurement is 34 cm, while my empire width measurement is 76 cm. So I said these are the two measurements we need, 34 and 76. And now I'm going to start with the empire length measurement which is 34 cm so i'm going to measure 34 cm now from my the highest point of the shoulder now if you're measuring when you're taking measurements and you want to measure from the shoulder you know maybe you're taking a lengthwise measurement please always start from this point is called the shoulder neck point that is the highest point of the shoulder notice this part of the shoulder and this part this is lower so if you're taking a measurement from here now it will be shorter than the measurement you take from here 
the highest point so you always take measurements from the highest point of the shoulder so now i'm going to start from there from that point downwards this is my 34 so that's where my empire line or my underboss line will fall i'm just going to square that now to the side seam this way so what i have here is my empire line i'm just going to write that now this is the empire line or the underbust line so that's done the next step is to measure the width of this line but skipping these darts so of course the you know that a dart is excess you're supposed to sew it up so it's not part of the measurements of these bodies so i'm going to measure this line now skipping the dart and before i start to measure i want you to know that these this line this dart leg and this dart leg and this dart leg are my actual dart legs the middle dart leg is just to show you where the middle is you know but when i say first leg i mean this when i say second leg i mean this take note now i'm going to measure from the center front to the first leg of my dart and i have 8.4 cm so i'm going to lift that 8.4 cm to the second leg of the dart 8.4 cm to the second leg of the dart and then to the side seam you know from that point to the side seam i have 20.8 cm so the length of that line is 20.8 cm so remember i told you that this is my empire line on paper so i'm going to write this as paper paper equals 20.8 cm but i have my empire width measurement remember i have my empire width measurement so what i'm going to do now this is my actual 76 here is my actual empire width measurement so i'm going to I'm going to do this as actual is 76 divided by 4. do you know why we're dividing by 4 is because what i'm working on here is a quarter of my body what this is is a quarter of my body but this 76 is the total is the conference measurement so i need to divide 76 by 4 and i'm going to have 19 cm 19 cm notice that what i have on paper right now is 20.8 so it means that there's an excess on this paper that i need to take out and is that thing i take out that will end up giving me the shape of the bust you know that gives me that beautiful princess seam you don't just create measurement you know to create that so to make that shape it is actually from the excess you know the excess between paper minus your actual measurement that you use to create that shape but let's 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 not get ahead of ourselves so now i have 20.8 as my measurement on paper and my actual here is 19 so what we're going to do now is called suppression suppression would be paper minus actual so I'm going to subtract the actual from paper and paper is 20.8, actual is 19. So 20.8 minus 19, I have 1.8 cm. So this 1.8 cm is the excess I need to take out, you know, to give me that perfect shape of my under bust. When I have to put this, you know, I have to drop this note that sometimes you might do, do this calculation and yours turns out to be 1 cm, like your suppression turns out to be 1 cm. What you should do here is there's a rule where the minimum suppression, minimum suppression is 1.5 cm. If your suppression is less than 1.5 cm, you must use 1.5 if your suppression is 0 0.5 cm please you would use 1.5 cm as your suppression if your suppression if after after calculating if you got 1.3 you would still need to use 1.5 but then there are certain people who after calculating they would have 2.5 you would use the 2.5 that you know that you got the, the 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 issue here is the minimum because you need to create that shape of the of the bust you need a minimum of 1.5 cm to be able to give you that shape of the bust. So please, if you have less than 1.5, use 1.5 cm. 
I guess we're good. My suppression here is 1.8 cm. I'm going to share this 1.8 cm in two. That's 1.8 divided by two would be 0 0.9. And I'm going to place them, you know, on both sides of my dart legs. So 0 0.9 cm on both sides of my dart legs on the empire line make sure it is on the empire line so this is 0 0.9 and this is another 0 0.9 so these are the this is what we have taken out from the empire line to give us that perfect shape next thing to do is to connect this suppression point to the dart legs on my waistline so you connect with a line like so to the dart legs on my waistline this way so basically what we've done is that we don't need these these former dart legs anymore these are now our dart legs that's done and the next thing i'll need to do is to connect the boss points to these suppression points what i'm doing here now is basically creating the shape of the boss and what i'm going to give you is a guideline on how to do that I'm giving you a guideline on how to create that shape. Yeah, I know that people just do any kind of curve, but then sometimes it means it makes that they have to, you know, take out some excess or some they have, you know, I don't know if you've experienced some weird shape when you just draw any kind of curve. So I'm giving you a guideline that will give you an almost, you know, a good enough, a perfect. I don't want I don't like to use the word perfect when it comes to pattern making because nothing is ever perfect, but then it will give you a good curve to work with. For your princess scene i'll connect the boss point now to that suppression point this way then i'll do it on this side too like so now what you need to do is to measure measure this line this line is 9 cm. You need your calculator at this point because you need to now find two thirds of this line. So basically, 9 times 2 over 3 because we need to find two thirds of this line. So two thirds of 9 is 6 cm. I'm going to measure 6 cm from the boss point to here this way. I'm going to do the same thing here now 6 cm this way then you do a 1.5 cm from the boss point downwards on the middle that leg so 1.5 cm from the boss point downwards on the middle that leg so 1.5 that's 1.5 cm and what i'm going to do here is to connect i'm going to connect the boss point so this 1.5 and then to this point that i have here so boss point to the 1.5 and then to this point let's do that now boss point to 1.5 and then to the two thirds please notice the placement of my curve notice the placement can you see that i've gotten that curve now boss point to the 1.5 and then to this point then see the way i flipped my pattern master now to then connect that point on the broken line to my suppression points on the empire line so look at it see the way it comes this way and then this way i'm going to now flip my pattern master to do something similar on the other side but this time around make sure it is not as curved as the left side so this left side is the side front piece the center front piece is also curved but they're not as curved as the side front piece so i'm still going to connect boss point to the 1.5 and then to the point on the broken line like so Boss point 1.5 and then to the point on the broken line. I'm going to flip again. Please, I hope you're noticing how I'm placing my curves. So now I've flipped and I'm going to connect the point on the broken line to my suppression point. And that is done. So this is basically the shape. This is how to shape your underbust and to give you the curve 
of your bust so it goes this way this way this is a side front piece let me just label that side front s f and this is c f do you get that so this is the center front piece and this is the side front piece this here is my shoulder dart and now if i leave it this way it means that i have a shoulder princess seam so it comes from this dart leg into the curve and down here and then this comes from this other dart leg into this curve of the center front and then down here so these darts are basically out for the princess seam we would need to eliminate these darts so all out all out all out because we're going to cut cut this out so this is basically the princess seam but then this is it we've gotten so used to just having a princess seam at the shoulder and maybe the armhole i know that many of us are used to that let me draw the armhole the common armhole princess seam basically what i'll need to do is to just find from around my mid armhole i'll use my curve to connect to the bust point like this can you see that so it will come this way and this way but when i have this you know it means i'll need to if you know anything about that manipulation you know that when you're creating a new dart you need to close the other existing one so if i'm if I, if I need a princess seam here because the princess seam actually comes from our dart in case you didn't know the princess seam comes from the dart it is all part of dart manipulation so it comes from here to the boss point and then we would close this shoulder princess seam this is just one way you can do your princess seam so it will come this way and the other one will come this way i'm going to show you all of the different pieces so you'd see them but let me just show you how it's created on this pattern so that's the armhole now we have the mid shoulder princess seam you know one example and then we have the armhole princess seam as an as another example let me do a princess seam from the shoulder tip this is the shoulder this is the shoulder tip i'm basically going to connect a line from this point to my boss point everything goes back to the boss point it all goes back to the boss point it all goes back to the boss point like this Please don't confuse these are i'm showing you different dart manipulations at once so this is the armhole this is now the shoulder tip let me show you um from the snp which is here from the snp it will be this way can you see that so instead of having the boring princess names just from this sh uh, mid shoulder and the armhole you can have it from you can have it from the snp or you could as well have it from the mid neck the mid neck is also another good position where you can come from oh i actually have a real i did a real where i showed all the different some of the things you could do your princess name and that did very well all right so you can also have it come from here in fact there's one that i like to show my students in class that comes from the center front into the boss point so as long as it comes from the top and it comes back to your boss point you have created a princess seam but for the armhole always make sure it comes from the mid armhole don't take it too low because of the you know the shape of the boss sometimes it turns out to be too curved so i like to keep it at the mid armhole area to the boss point so these are the different positions where your where your princess seam can come from and as i said if you have if you want your princess seam to come from here it means you would need to close this dart for this to open for this to you know happen here but this is basically how to draft the the princess seam and this is my front bodies i've shown you the different things you can do from the top and then i also showed you how to create the shape of the under bust so i'm going to cut this out now but first i'll cut out the outline 
honestly think patinating is very it's very interesting the possibilities seem endless it seems so endless and for me the reason why i like to teach it is so people know that they can achieve so much more than you know what's just what somebody just told you to do if there's one thing i don't like about learning is where it seems like there's no other way to achieve something but one you know and where there are a lot of assumptions you don't know why you're doing what you're doing but with pattern making you always know pattern making always answers the question why and for me that's why i enjoy it and that's why i even like to teach it you know just to answer all of your questions why and i always look forward to seeing questions i would love to you know i'd love to to hear your views about some of the things you learn on my page you know just asking questions about anything and I'm very open to answering questions because we all learn you learn and i learn from your questions so this is it Oh yeah, something is missing. So I can't cut out until I draw out grain lines on this pattern. My pattern is not complete without grain lines. And thankfully, I still have my center front. I still have my center front intact to be able to do that. So I'm just going to draw a grain line here. I know that in one of the videos I'm going to do very soon, I would explain the importance of grain lines in garment making. So, ten, ten. like I said, you can, you can never draw or you should never cut out your patterns or create patterns without grain lines. So I've done I've drawn out my green lines now and I can cut. I'm cutting from you know the new dart legs I created this way. Um this is what I'm using. I'm taking it up to the shoulder princess seam, so into the dart legs. Remember I marked out everywhere you see green is just an excess now this is my side front piece and to my center front piece I'm also going to cut from this line here following the curve that's out and then to this other dot leg like so so these two pieces are out they are the dots that i just cut out and this here would be my this is my princess scene so of course i'm going to before taking this to fabric you need to add the allowances so the allowance you naturally use for something like this would be from 1.3 cm to 1.5 cm so 1.3 or 1.5 cm add following this curve and then following this one too you need to add your allowance of course you're also going to add allowances to all of the necessary seams but for the panels of the princess seam you need to add from 1.3 cm to 1.5 cm you can't do too much because of the tension you want it to be able to you know form properly and of course you still need to um, create some notches these lines here my bust points are notches even my empire line here serving as notches but especially this is serving as notches for me so at the point where i'm sewing i'm going to use this to notch i would have been able to i would have still created you know notches i could still do that now by placing this way put it together this way and then i have a notch there that's it for for this like i said i can cut if i want my princess seam to come from any of these other places i would slash this line and then close this so you close this and you slash this and you'd have another princess seam 
I'll still close this and slash this, I would have my armhole princess seam. If I close this and slash this, I would have my princess seam from the SNP. So you can literally play with where your princess seam comes from, but then you must always keep your waist starts because that's where you're going to do the shaping of the under bust. So this is how to do the princess seam for the front and I'll show you what to do at the back. So it's now time to work on the back and every time I work on anything that relates to the back i always like to leave some room for the zip allowance so i'll typically always leave a 2 cm 2 cm on this part this pivot point it's not a boss point it is a pivot point at the back so we'll just draw lines from wherever we want our princess seam to come from so if i want an armhole princess seam at the back i'll basically also come from the mid armhole using my curve just going to curve into that point and i've created an armhole princess seam at the back i'll just do a notch here that's done if i would like a mid shoulder princess seam all i'll need to do here is just make sure i know where my mid shoulder is that's this point this is my mid shoulder so i'm just going to i'm going to use this is my hip curve i'll use my hip curve or it could be a line but i like i like it slightly curved so i'll use my hip curve to connect to that point this is yet another Princess seems way to cut from the mid shoulder into these dart legs and separate. This armhole will come from here. Let me do one more. I'll just do one more or two more. <laughs> so as I did in front, I could also have one come from this SNP. This is the SNP at the back. I'll connect there now still to that pivot point like so yet another princess seam so you see that it's not just you don't you don't only have you see you don't only have so you see that
the back or let's say you have like a shoulder princess seam in front it would be nice for the line to continue at the back so you'd still want to keep the mid armhole princess seam and guess what you can actually have multiple positions on the same garment i, I could decide to have this mid shoulder point and also this mid neck point you know so i would have two lines coming from the top instead of just one you could do that you could try that if you want but just make sure that you have green lines on each piece of the pattern like i said i have a video it's a quick video on this it's a short a youtube short you can just check that out and you see the different positions where the princess thing can come from this is it i hope you you really understood the shaping of the of the under bust and then the positions of your darts for your princess seam so i hope you learned a thing or two and if you have questions like i said please ask drop your comments in the comment section and i'll definitely answer it's an opportunity for us all to learn you know it's important to learn learning is what this channel is all about you know it's my desire to see people do things the right way and that's the reason why i started this channel so the more we learn the more we know what the right way is and we'll do better so thank you for watching this video and please do not forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and also click the notification bell so you do not miss any video because there's so much coming your way on the fashion architect thanks for watching this tutorial and see you in the next video